So Alexander, can you tell us what was the disease that you were struggling with? How did you receive your healing and where you are at now? All right. I'm so excited because every time I show this, it just makes me so happy. Um, so for about 10 years, I was dealing with um, a medical condition called endometriosis, which is when you have tissue from your uterine wall and your uterine wall grow more than it needs to. And it causes a lot of pain. So throughout the 10 years, the pain um, progressively got worse. So every single month when I would have my menstrual cycle, I would be in excruciating pain. And when I mean I was in so much pain, I, I literally could not focus. I was not in my right mind. I couldn't put my shoes on. I couldn't move. I couldn't speak to you. I, I just could not function properly. So I missed a lot of school because of it. Um, in college, I had to drop out a few times. I would have problems walking. I'd be in pain throughout the month. Um, I went through many, many different treatments. Um, I even went through a couple treatments that um, shut down my system and actually made me go through menopause. Um, and there was a lot of side effects to that that I had to go through. Um, a couple of different surgeries where they would go in and they would burn off the extra tissue and stuff. And then a few years later, I would have to go back in and, and do it all over again. So with, the thing with endometriosis is that it's, it's not curable. There is no cure for it. You have it for the rest of your life unless you get everything completely removed. And so when I was 17, I was told by, by the nurses and the doctors, um, hey, if if you keep going like this for a few more years, you are not going to be able to have kids. It's just, it's just not possible. Like the, the pain that you are having, it's, it's just going to mess up your body. You're not going to be able to conceive. And at 17, they're telling me, you need to have a baby now or you should get everything removed. And I was thinking, okay, <laughs> I'm a junior in high school, and I was like, I don't even have a boyfriend. I'm like, how does this even work? I'm like, what? And I was like, I want to get married, and you know, I have these dreams of you know getting married, and having a beautiful family, and stuff. And um, and the nurse is like, ah, you don't need to get married. You don't need a man. Just find someone that's cute, and we'll give you cute babies. And then you know, you just need one. That's fine. And um, I'm like, yeah, that's that's not how it works, but that, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway. Jokes all aside, um, I did have a decision. Um, I was sitting in the doctor's office, and they literally told me, tomorrow we can get you in, and you can have everything removed, and you will not have to suffer again. Yet, um, I, I knew deep down inside, this is not my portion, and I know God is is going to heal me. And throughout these years, you guys, I, I tried so hard to hide it. I tried so hard not to let anyone know. I felt ashamed and embarrassed. And there was even this one time during practice, I felt it like I was going to pass out because I would always black out from the pain. And I didn't even make it to the second pew. And I just, I fainted right there. And that's when, like the whole worship team found out. Mariana, she was on the team with me at the time. And, um, and I realized that I was fighting this battle all by myself and I wasn't meant to fight it alone in the first place. And the enemy tries to isolate you and he tries to put you by yourself so then that way he can consume you. At the time I had this mindset like, oh, well, you know what? This is just the way my life is going to be. This is what I was born with and there's nothing I can do about it. I mean, with this condition, they don't really know where it comes from and, you know, sorry, here's some meds. Hopefully you can cope with it and good luck for the rest of your life. That's kind of how it was. And I was like, you know what? God sent his son to die on the cross for me so I wouldn't have to suffer this way. He already died for this condition that I am carrying. And so fast forward, 21, I go to Scoen and I'm with this group um, that we took over there. And TV Joshua, he actually prayed for me. And it was amazing, you guys. He was literally telling me exactly what my condition was. I had not even told him anything. He even drew it for me on a piece of paper of how it grew in my body and all the treatments I had, the medicines, the surgeries, all of these things. When I came home after the trip, fluids started to leave my body for a week. And after that, I sh uh, shortly after that, I got married. And um, two months after we got married, God blessed us with a beautiful baby girl, Zara. <laughs> And, man, 
I was, I was happy that God just <laughs> gave us one baby and, and he blessed us with two beautiful baby girls and something that is absolutely incredible that I hope this encourages you is that with both my girls, I, um, I had a C-section and with my first one, the doctors checked me and to their surprise, there was not one ounce of endometriosis in me. Let's give God all the glory. This is God. This is his glory in her, that he was able to heal her to 100%. And now she has two beautiful baby girls. There's, you can tell with this, is that even where you have to see it to believe it, and there you have it, where it was not in sight, even for the doctors to say, where something that was incurable was cured by our precious Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So Alexander, tell us just a few words of advice for those that are waiting anxiously for their healing. Honestly, I can just say that after I was healed, there is nothing that will ever convince me. I mean, once you know the truth, there is nothing that will ever convince me that God is not real nothing yeah. you have to understand that when you come from a place of suffering a place of darkness a place of torture a place where you just can't take it anymore a place of desperation and you finally receive that freedom that's it the truth is the truth and yeah. so i encourage you to be persistent to continue to fight for your blessing because the time will come where that breakthrough is going to reach your life and your life is never going to be the same ever that is why any person who has ever asked me why I have I only sing for church that is why amen. because he healed me so amen, amen. Yeah. Wow. Amen, amen. thank you for watching this content I know this was a blessing to you we would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell on our channel so that each time we upload something you can be notified don't forget to share this content with your friends and family and on social media. We're so thankful to you. Better is not good enough. The best is yet to come.